All right, welcome. This is Ender here from bullwins.org. I'm doing a, an early Monday update instead of a Friday update. Um, so this is the weekday video, not the weekend video. Uh, welcome. If you've not been here before, this, uh, this is I'm going to look at the markets from an Elliott Wave perspective. Um, if you don't like that, fair enough. Uh, if you do, check out bullwags.org, um, check out the membership offers, uh, come and join, and you get nightly Elliott Wave updates on my website. Uh, apart from that, let's get into the markets. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm doing the exact opposite of what I promised I'd be doing. I thought I'd do more videos. I'm actually managing to do less videos, uh, but it's a busy time of year. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get into what has happened over the last couple of weeks. The, we'll start in the FX market. So this is Euro dollar. Um, this is the count that I'm working with. We were tracking a possible, well, first of all, we were tracking a possible series of one twos, but that didn't pan out. I switched to a, a triangle uh, in wave B, and that seems to have panned out. We've got a, a, a collapse out of the triangle, so it's an impulsive decline, and now we've got a corrective recovery. So the corrective recovery is impulsive decline in wave one, corrective recovery in wave two, and we are expecting a third wave decline over the next few weeks, at least probably next month or even more, even a couple of months. Um, all depends on how these corrections, uh, how long these corrections take. Um, the impulsive move lower always comes quickly, you know. Um, the correction to the upside always takes longer than you would ever expect. But here we are, um, probably topping out in a second wave now, and we should move lower into a third wave this week. And that's the idea that I've been working on on the short term count. So five waves down, we were tracking this uh, three wave correction higher over the last couple of weeks. Last week, especially, we've got five waves up into wave C. And then on Friday, we got a nice impulsive move lower. So we're kind of trading back down near the, um, uh, the trend channel. So is this wave one of three of wave C? So that's the question today. I would like to see that second wave high at 107.52 or 107.53. I see that hold and impulsive move lower continue. So that's what I'll be tracking today and we'll see how it how it develops tonight in tonight's update. Okay, so let's move on. This is, uh, this is not crude oil, this is uh, cable. Um, Initially, I was working with uh, one, two, and this is wave three, but uh, the correction came high enough to suggest that we were actually in another impulse, in, or sorry, we were, we were tracing out another impulse wave here. So we've got a one, two pattern. We've got a one, two followed by a one, two. So we can still, I could probably view this a little bit differently as well. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but uh, there is another way of viewing this where we could say that wave three, sorry, we could say that wave, uh, this would be wave three of three, but yeah, I kind of don't favor that right now. On the short term count, you can see why we've got this rally off the low here. I'm looking at a three wave rally higher. We'll see how that goes, but we've got five waves up into a possible wave A. We've got an expanded flat correction wave B. Uh, on Friday, I was looking at, looking at a possibility of a lower wave B, but I don't think that's going to happen now. And it looks like we could be tracing out five waves up here in wave C already. So as long as wave B holds here, 124.48, 124.50, um, we should top out in wave C, well, above 62% retracement. I'm looking at 78.6 retracement now, but one, what's that, 126.20? But above 62% retracement, 125.50. So we came close to that today. Uh, so far, we're kind of backing off that this morning. Uh, we don't even need a major rally in wave C. I mean, we've got five waves almost complete up in wave C already. Uh, we'll see how it goes today. If we top and reverse, especially if we break uh, 124.50 again, um, that will indicate that uh, wave two is probably done already. And we're moving down into wave three. But next move, once we complete wave two, it'll be wave one of uh, three to the downside. So we should retrace most of this correction higher uh, once wave one gets underway. So back down towards 123 again in wave one. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, dollar yen. Uh, we had a pretty sharp reversal on Friday evening. So 
um, I've kind of updated the count today um, to take that into account. So there was a couple of things that happened last week. There was this uh, massive rally, which suggested we were in a third of a third of a third acceleration. And then we had this massive um, kind of collapse out of that rally, which suggested that we uh, were actually completing a wave three. So um, I think we may have wave three in green already done now. I mean, it, things are progressing quite quickly here. Um, Dolly N kind of tends to do that now and again. You can see how these um, collapses happen so quickly. You know, we have these the collapse into wave four happened really quickly, really, very punchy moves lower, and then massive retracements. So don't be surprised we get a massive retracement today. Um, at the moment, I'm looking at a possible, you know, wave three of five. So I should go out of it. Uh, no, I should go to the four hour. Yeah. So this is the four hour count. This would be wave five in red. At the, at the moment, I'm looking at wave three of five already complete, and we're moving down in in a three wave correction into wave four of five. Um, so if we get a bounce today, that would be in wave B of four. So we've got an ABC down wave B over the next couple of days. And let's see if we get a um, corrective lower high here, and then we'll move lower into wave C of four, uh, and a rally then up into wave five of five, uh, probably you know towards the end of the month maybe. Uh, this this fourth wave correction should take. Well, let's see if it's if it's comparable with wave two, it'll probably take two weeks, maybe even three. Um, so you know, it'll allow for a pretty choppy trade over the next couple of weeks, especially this week as wave B kind of tracks higher. If we got wave A done, you can see that we closed out a trend channel uh, up into the top here, and then we reverse back into the trend channel pretty quickly. Looks like we've got five waves down, so this could be a zigzag correction of five, three, five. Um, so wave B would trade up into the middle of the channel, and then wave C would be uh, back down towards, let's say, that shoulder of support here around wave one. So about 151 uh, for wave four to complete, and then we'd look higher into wave five. So that'll be another track higher for a while, um, maybe even up towards 160, 165 area. So we'll see how that goes. For the moment, we're correcting lower, and we'll just track it as it goes. Okay. Uh, let's see, this is the Dow, the four hour count in the Dow, so let's kind of move you along there, get rid of you, get rid of you. Okay, we've got the impulsive decline, and it looks like we're tracking a um, corrective rally. The, there is a couple of ways, there's always a couple of ways of doing it, but at the moment, you could either have wave two complete, or we could be moving into a larger wave two. So if we get the Fibonacci retracement here, and let's blow this up a bit. Um, you can see that the rally, first of all, the initial decline came right back down to the fourth wave, uh, previous fourth wave, at the second degree lower. Uh, we smashed through the first uh, fourth wave there in wave four in green. We found support here at this little uh, left shoulder here um, at wave four in, this would be wave four of three of the previous rally. So the level kind of seems to be particularly important now, 37, 130 for that area. If we break through that, I think we've pretty much confirmed a top and we're moving impulsively lower, um, but we're not there yet. For the moment, the Rally, let's get this set up correctly here. The rally in wave two creeped up close to the 50% retracement level. So far, this bounce, the initial bounce off the low, uh, we just tucked in below the 50% retracement line. So there is enough there, there's enough of a retracement there to suggest that wave two is done. Um, but I'm kind of caught between a, you know, a rock and a hard place here because you know, even though the decline of that um, retracement, it can be viewed as impulsive. We've also got an impulsive bounce off that retracement. So at the moment, I'm kind of 50-50 on, on how this second wave is going. Let's go to the short term count here. I can still allow for one more decline in wave one. I can allow for a second wave completed. 
or I can allow for a second wave still underway. So it's we're still, you know, we're caught between um, this conjunction of of patterns here. Um, and I don't know where to hang my hat right now at this point in time. So we'll see how today goes. If we trade lower, if we start to take out this uh, wave one low, then I might favor, you know, we'll initially we'll probably get rid of this uh, alternate count here for a larger wave two, but I still don't know whether it's wave five of one or if this is wave one of three, of a larger wave three down. Um, and we may not know that until maybe midweek this week. Uh, if we break above this uh, 38, let's say 38,600 level, um, that will suggest that we're into a larger wave two. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, and we would postpone, we'd look for three waves up in wave two, and we'd postpone the decline into wave three um, probably towards next week again. Or maybe the, maybe even the end of this week. It, it really depends on how how quickly we decide which pattern is um, the correct pattern here, and that is the rock on the hard place that we're between right now. So uh, the market needs to decide where it's going to go here. We're kind of in limbo at the moment. We're hanging between three viable counts here. Um, if we break above the recent high, that will narrow it down to one count. And that would be that larger wave too. And I'd be quite happy with that. That's, that's fine by me. Uh, we'd look for three waves up. If you can see. We'd look for a three wave rally up into probably that 62% retracement level. Uh, 39,000 39, probably. Uh, complete wave two and then turn down into wave three. If we break lower below the wave three low, that will only... Uh, rule out this uh, larger second wave uh, wave count. So we'll still be stuck between two counts. Is it wave five of one or is it wave one of the larger wave three? So, you know, <laughs> nothing is given to, nothing's easy in this life. Um, there is always a decision to be made. Um, so at the moment, I'm not going to pin my hat on anything. I'm just going to see how the trade is going to go today. You know, hopefully we'll get some sort of clarification maybe by tomorrow, maybe even tonight, or tomorrow evening anyway. Um, by the middle of this, this week, we should be able to kind of uh, be more confident on which way this short-term pattern is going. But you can see for the moment how interesting this decline is anyway. It's an impulsive decline. We just have to figure, you know, what's the best... Um, the best fit pattern from here. So, uh, okay, market, it's time to wake up and, and make a decision. Uh, we're very close to a decision, though, I think. So that's, uh, in itself, that is interesting. Also, here is gold. We're looking at a fourth wave decline in gold. Uh, so we probably have an A down complete and a B, well, three waves down a wave A I have uh, shown into uh, this recent low. That will be last week's low. So that'll be wave A of four. Then we're looking, tracking higher in wave B. And then we should look for a wave C down. Um, let's go, sorry, hourly count again. And we should look for a wave C of wave four later on in this week. The only, like, you know, you could still view wave B underway, even if we broke to a new high here or a new lower high, because the, the actual form of this correction is not... You know, nothing is ideal at the moment. So we could track higher into wave B, especially if we break 23.52 today. So that would suggest that the larger wave B is probably in play here. So you can see that that would, that kind of best fit channel would bring us up towards probably about 23.75, somewhere around there, to complete wave two, but sorry, wave B. Uh, but first of all, we got to reckon with this wave A high. So that's, let's say 23.53. Uh, if we break that, then we're looking at a larger wave B, and then we would postpone this C wave decline until, you know, later on in the week anyway. Um, but maybe tonight we should be able to, uh, we should be able to decide, I'd say, by tonight. If all goes well here, we should be able to decide by tonight which way 
uh, wave B is going and which way, how long we'll have to wait for wave C. Okay, let's move on. Crude oil, um, kind of so far so good, I think, in crude oil. Uh, we have an impulsive decline or a series of impulsive declines and a mostly corrective looking rally last week. So at the moment, we could be looking at a 1 2 1 2 pattern. Um, we have at least you know, an impulsive looking decline off that, um, off that uh, second wave high. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of, again, I'm kind of like stuck between possibilities here. Uh, the market is showing us a high. It's showing us an impulsive possibility to the downside, uh, but we have not followed through yet. So, uh, looking for a follow through into a third wave this week that would uh, indicate wave three is underway. And, you know, once we get that follow through, then we'll be able to make some projections uh, lower. Uh, but at the moment, I'd like to see that a 85.64 level hold um, and a decline into wave three uh, coming our way. Okay, the S&P uh, probably going to be forced to kind of uh, cave on this pattern today. Well, it all depends on how the trade goes today. We still have the possibility of a five wave decline here. Um, the, the major difference here between the Dow and the S&P is this uh, initial decline into wave one. So we've got a possible uh, expanding wedge pattern here. Um, it fits. It's a pretty rare pattern, and I think that's probably why I'm Kind of apprehensive here. So where do we go from here? Well, uh, an impulsive decline would really clear this up. Um, you know, a, a waterfall decline would really suit me down to the ground, but we're going to have to see um, how this develops here. I'm kind of holding off. Um, we came close to uh, breaking that wave one low on Friday. It hasn't done it yet. Uh, the market is kind of holding off it just yet. So that resistance is holding at wave one. Let's see if we spill down uh, into a fifth wave today would be great. Um, if that happens, then uh, we'll be safe enough with this count. If it doesn't, if we break that uh, wave one high, that oh, sorry, that wave one low at 51, let's say 5128, then uh, we'll have to rethink what's happening here. Okay, let's get on to. Silver, it's four hour count. Silver, looking for a second wave correction in silver. Count in silver is slightly different than gold. Uh, we've got an A, B pattern done uh, down into the second wave. Um, so we've got wave A and B done of A. And we've got a possible five wave pattern tracing out in wave C of A. Uh, that must turn lower today. So we need to break uh, 2665 today in order to stick with this wave count. If we don't, then I'll be switching to the alternate count here, shown in red. So we've got a possible three wave decline in wave A, and then we look for a larger retracement into wave B. Uh, and once that comes about, then we look for wave C down. Uh, it's the same, it's, the same, it's a different iteration on the same count. Um, so this would still be a, a three, three, five, uh, overall decline into wave two, uh, as you can see here. So we've got three down in wave A, we're looking for three up in wave B, and then wave C down um, to complete wave two. And again, kind of looking for a break back into this kind of um, pivot high around 2590, 2593. So we've got that B wave high there, 2593. We've got that internal shoulder here, that'll be a fourth wave correction within this rally. Um, that gives us a kind of a, a reasonable target area between, let's say, 26 and 24.30 for wave two to complete. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. For the moment, we're still working on this wave A down. Then we'd look for wave B up and then look for wave C down later on uh, in this week. But I think A and B is enough to take us through the end of this week. Um, and today's trade should most... Well, it would be it would be better if we broke 26.65 before turning higher into wave B. 
um, that would kind of confirm this outlook or this uh, major wave count here. So um, I think that's about it. I usually kind of waffle on about the other markets, but that's the main markets I cover nightly. And if you're interested in nightly updates, head over to bullways.org, check us out, uh, or check me out. <laughs> I am just myself. Um, and uh, sign up and you'll be able to get nightly LOA up updates uh, on the website. Apart from that, I hopefully, hopefully I'll be back on Friday evening uh, for a wrap of this week's action. And to all you on the website, all you members, I'll see you tonight. Uh, 10 p.m. GMT, as usual. That's around, what's that, about 5 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Uh, until then, that's the uh, Elliott Wave analysis part of this video done. And I usually end every video with a kind of a call to action, not a call to action to join my website, but a call to action to join, you know, eternal life. Never mind the, this is where, this is where I ruin my business by, you know, suggesting that we think other than business uh, for a moment. Um, I always end the video thinking of eternity because we are eternal beings, we are not uh, just physical meat suits, as they call, as uh, the atheist would like to suggest you are. Uh, you don't, well, maybe you do only live once, but you have only one physical life, but you have an eternal life to think of. Um, and anyone who's done any serious thinking on this matter must um, admit that we are more than just, you know, some sort of happenstance that crawled out of primordial ooze, which is impossible anyway. You know, the the physical world is creation itself has inbuilt to it the laws of entropy. Every single uh, area of science, if you are a scientific person, every area of science uh, adheres to the laws of entropy, that is, that things decay over time. The only, <laughs> the most evident part of that is biology. The most, most evident area of, sci of science that should uh, adhere to that rule is biology, but that is the area of science that denies it. Uh, through, you know, um, Darwinian kind of uh, evolution. There is no way for random processes to produce more complex organisms. It doesn't happen. It goes against the laws of entropy. It cannot happen. You start off complex and you go towards decay. That is the law of entropy. And we, our bodies, anyone who's getting older, realizes that we go towards decay. But you, your eternal self will not decay. It exists eternally. And the only choice you have to make is where you exist eternally. So you can go back to your creator. You can, you can um, accept the gracious work of salvation done by the Savior, by Messiah. Yeshua, Jesus, who paid for our sins on the cross, and you can accept that, and you can go to your creator, back to your creator, to exist eternally with him, or you can die in your sin and try and pay for it eternally yourself, away from God. And they, those are, that's the only choice. You know, people tend to say that, you know, that Christians are, or um, exclusive, or why are you so discriminatory or exclusive of other ways? You know, why can't there be other ways to God? Why can't Zoroastrianism bring you to God? Why can't Islam bring you to God? Why can't Buddhism bring you to God? God didn't make, God is not a, a, an author of confusion. God didn't make 6,000 different ways to get to him. He made one way. He made it easy for us. One way. 
you either have your sins paid for or you have your sins on you so that's the um, that's the equation you have to figure out in your in your life but you, the problem is you don't know how long your life is going to be so it's a it's a, a riddle inside of a an unsolvable equation figure that one out a lot of people say, oh, well, I'll think about it on my deathbed. Okay, tell me when your deathbed's going to be, and tell me if you actually do get a deathbed. Because lots of people don't. 150,000 people die every day, on average. And most of them don't die in a deathbed. So, that is what I leave you with. Um, think about what Jesus did for you. If you feel called, go and ask God because i'm a i'm a bad i can't explain this correctly um god will, will reveal it to you anyway if you ask in um earnestly you know in truth so that's that see you friday bye bye